All right, how's everybody doing? Yeah, we survived so far the semester. <laughs> yeah. What happened with test one? Anything? Did you ever get your test back? Uh, yeah. Was it like okay? Yeah. It was disappointing. It was very disappointing. But did you guys sell your stuff and you're like, okay, I did miss this step? Is it? No. no? So you didn't miss stuff? Some of it was just not showing up enough, enough work, or yeah, just not showing up work. Ooh, that's rough. Other parts of it were like. I don't want to be on the ECO and then do all the editing that I need to create on the rest of it. Well, now we know what to do, right? Uh, yeah. Plus, we know that he grades really nicely. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, I we talked to Dr. Russell. So, he says he's going to give you another chance to re show, I guess, some of the questions that you did the worst on that test. You're going to have them again, so make sure you go back on your test, walk through all the steps so you make sure you can show as much work as possible. And today we're going to go over stuff we didn't cover. Also, feel free to rewatch the video of the first lecture is on YouTube if you need like um, some refresh on that, since some of those problems might be on your test again, especially a dependent source one. I think you might see that again if you if your main um, you had a main. Yeah, if that if that was in if that was one of the lowest ones that might come back. So make sure you know how to do your dependent sources. Uh, but in this review, we're gonna cover name, um, we're gonna cover Norton, Tevenant, and we're gonna cover adding capacitors and inductors. Okay. All right. So we're gonna kind of start in order, and we're gonna go ahead and start with a name. Um, so how how everybody felt about their homework? Pretty decent. Okay, so here's your problem. So let me put this here. Okay. So what are the two words associated with name? Right, so current sources, number one, and conductances, right? Okay. All right, so what is the first thing we need to do in this problem? Right, okay, so the top's gonna pretty much look the same, right? Still have that current source. We still have this guy here. Um, actually, let me. Um, and if you guys can start like get, finding the values of that, those R's in G's, right? Because we need to convert them to G. Go ahead. I'm going to kind of redraw these. So a voltage source and a resistor convert into what as a current source? All right, so I'm going to put my resistor here still, and then my, is my current source looking in the left or the right? Yeah, good job, left. And then, um, so here we have these. Why are my resistors so ugly today? And then uh, for the second current source, is that going to be looking left or right? Okay, anybody's got values on me? 
on my resistors. You want? You want it over here? All right. Oh, are they too too small? Oh, yeah, that's five. Sorry. All right. And anybody knows our current values? Mm -hmm. We're going to call that GG3. All right, perfect. So now everything should be in terms of current sources, right? And conductances. Okay, so let's go ahead and um I think does he label your notes? Yeah, so we have one, two, and then three. And what's the problem? Um there Yeah, just actually just find the equation for the null voltages. So, so we're trying to find All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and how many how big is going to be my matrix? All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and figure out what the values are going to be. So what's my first? So let's see everything that's connected here. These. So what's the verdict? Yeah, good job. All right, now what's sharing? Yep, good job. Everybody see that? Three negative zero point two because of these guys, right? These and these. All right, um, and then sharing with yep, zero. Right, and then we'll just repeat. And then what is connected to V and two? Mm -hmm. And then share. Yeah. And last one. What's the verdict? Yeah. Did everybody see that? That we're not sharing the point oh six. Right, because somebody said at the 0 0.06. Does that answer your question? Whoever that was? Nobody had that? Okay, everybody. So for not being, it's 0 0.5 and 0 0.125, right? Yeah. 
yeah, just everything here. Okay, so we generate that to the negative one times our current will give us our B1, B2, B3, right? Uh, and what are our currents? Mm hmm which is... Mm -hmm. You got this, guys. What is it? Perfect. Beautiful. <laughs> Very smart. Um, and then last one. Yeah. All right. And we all understand that going in, you add, going out, you subtract. <coughs> Everybody's comfortable with that? Okay, cool. So that's it. You guys did the problem. Ever, anybody know how this calculator in your life? Okay. <laughs> all right. So you just plug it in here. And your answer should be, if you don't have a um, an inspire, you can always use Kramer's rule, which I'm never going to go over. But you're welcome to come take a picture of this if you need Kramer's rule in your life. Um, All right, and that's your answer if you guys want to work this out later. Um, I don't think you'll have something as easy as this on your test for, for me, but I couldn't find any problems different from your problem set on our homeworks or tests. Uh, they were pretty much the same you had. So I would kind of, you guys had a hard one on your homework though, um, a name with dependent sources. I will just kind of rework that out as many times as you need to. Because um, that, I think it was 51.8A or something. That's kind of like the level of difficulty that you may find on your name. Um, all right, I'm going to pass it over to Suzanne. She's going to do some nargins and sevens. All right, that's just a All right, so we're going to start off with the Norton's equivalent. And um, for Norton's equivalent, which do we use, name or name? Name, right? This is just a good thing that I like to have on hand just to know, okay, if I want to solve for this, I got to do this, right? Because MAME helps us find currents, mesh currents, and then NAME helps us find voltages. So looking at this, what's wrong with this circuit right now that's not letting us do MAME? It's this open right here, right? Okay, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to close it off with what I like to call an imaginary source, right? So since we're doing main, we're going to close it off with a voltage source. And I'm going to call it E naught. Right? So now we have three loops here. So we're going to do one here, one here, and one here. So this is going to be I am one, I am two, and I am three, right? So which one of these mesh currents do we want for our final answer? Because mm -hmm. that's the one that's looking at um, 
this side here, right? So that's why we want IM3. So we want IM3 or negative IM3? Okay, so now we can start generating our main. Do we need to change any source, sources or anything? Nope. So let's start just generating the resistance side. What's our first value that's going to go? Six. Yep, good job. Now what's in common between mesh one and two? Okay, now what's in common between one and three? Exactly. Now mesh two? <laughs> You're counting together? Four, yep. Yeah. Now what's in common between two and three? Exactly. Now what's in mesh three? Good job. So now this is going to give us I am one, I am two, and I am three. So actually, before we get started here, we have some dependent sources, right? We have B4 and I5, right? So can we write those in terms of things we want to find? What's the verdict? Okay, I am two minus I am three. So smart. So what's before? Wait, what's before? Yeah. Right. Times R four. Yeah. Is that right? Okay, and then if you guys want, we can plug this in. R four is just one ohm, right? So V4 equals IM2. So now whenever we go into this, we can have our little uh, cheat sheet. So starting off, what's our sources in mesh one? Here we can we can do the Sixteen. What is it? Is there anything else or is that it? Okay, now what's in mesh two? Okay, and mesh three? Oh, you guys are such experts now. Look at you. <laughs> You're great at doing these now. Yeah, you can, you can crop it. I just want to take this over here. <laughs> That's fine. Everything's shifting. <laughs> okay. So now, can we split these up into dependent sources, our created sources, and the normal ones? Yes. All right. So let's rewrite this quickly. So what's in our normal sources? Or Exactly. Let's see. Plus. What's next? Exactly. So now we can replace those um, variables that we didn't know with this one, right? So we can, if you want to do on the side, RMI5 equals RMIM2, right? Minus RMIM3. Then mu v4. That just equals mu I am two, right? So now can we put that into a matrix that's dependent on the mesh currents? What is that gonna look like? What's that what's the first value here? Is R M two? Okay. Next row. Mm -hmm. 
View is 4.2, RM is 2.8. Okay. That's 4.2. Then anything no. else? Okay. Anything down here? No. Exactly. So now we have this big matrix. So we can move this to the other side, right? We can subtract. So what is this going to give us? Uh, six minus three. Six. Mm -hmm. Minus one. Minus zero point zero. Yep. And then that's going to be I am one. I am two. I am three equals. Then we have our 16, 0, 0, plus our imaginary source that we created, right? So if you get to this point, you're doing pretty good. So now so all these steps, these are all the steps you must show. Yes. Because <laughs> if you just plug it in your Inspire, you're in for a bad surprise. <laughs> so if we want to start by finding um, the current, right? What should we set E not equal to? Zero. Exactly. So whenever we do that, we just have our normal equation, negative three, negative point two, negative two, two, negative two, two, our I M, and then equals this, right? So which current do we want again? Three. I am three. So can anyone give me a value for I am three? Hold on, guys. We messed up somewhere here. Right here. Yep. So, what's the real value going to be? Because we need to do, we're not only going to have RMIM2, right? We're going to have um, RMI5 minus mu V4. So, this whole term is 16 plus RMI5. So, that's going to be RMIM2. RM, I am 3, minus mu V4, which is I am 2, right? So what's the new value here? So what is mu? So we said negative 2.2? Okay, so now, so what's the new value on the left side? What's the answer? 1.2, okay. Right, because negative 2.2 positive is 2.2 minus 1. All right. Makes sense how we got back here and what happened? All right. So now, recalculate, please. <laughs> exactly. 1.6 amps. So now we want to find the conductance, right? So what do we have to set? Um, for E naught and one. E naught equals one. Is there something else we need to set? Zero. Everything else is zero. Exactly. So all non dependent sources to zero. So E's equals zero. All 
right? So what is that going to be? So what's the value? Zero. So now we can draw our equivalent. So typically it looks like this, right? With it going upwards. We have this, this in parallel. This is our G, this is our I. So now you can leave it has you can leave it as it going up or you can convert it to make it go down instead. Just whatever you do, make sure you specify which one's which way. And then what is the equivalent of GN being zero? So what is that? Exactly. So that can just go away. And that is your answer. Does that make sense for everybody? All right. So you guys saw how easily it was to forget something and make a mistake. So I think this is why Dr. Russell really wants you guys to show every step, because if we didn't show our steps of what we plugged in, we wouldn't have been able to say, oh, that's where we went wrong. We didn't put that um, mu in there, right? Um, I have a question. What's up? So the investments, I'm going to do this. Uh-huh. I have to bring the investments uh, at the last part. Okay. Lecture, and I think a lot of us have it a little fuzzy. Okay. So, so we just plugged in E naught as one, right? And our negative came in from just how the polarity sets. Now, um, we were talking about this earlier, me and uh, Monse, that if we did have this as because technically this is our imaginary source, right? We could flip it and put it however way we want, if the positives on the bottom or not. And they would basically give us the same answer in this case. I don't know if that's valid for every single problem, because all it would do is we'd flip the polarity of the other two mesh currents, right? Or the other two um, conductances. So. Yeah, yeah, so we're in here, we're putting an E naught equal to one, and that negative comes in from how we set up our matrix, right? Because this is positive, so whenever we go this way, it's going to hit that first, so it'll be negative. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 
that me? Is that good for everybody? Anyways, work it out with the by changing the source, change the polarity, work it out. Let us know if, if it doesn't give you the same thing. If you want extra exercise. <laughs> so now we're gonna move on to a Thevenin's equivalent. Right. So like we said before, what does Thevenin equivalent give us? Same. Exactly. So, so I'll give you guys a second to look at that problem. Can I get your um, get thinking? So, like we did before, we're gonna have to add that imaginary source, right? And we wanted a current source because we're doing name. So I'll just call it J naught. So this is pretty similar to that uh, name we just did. And thankfully he gave everything to us in conductances, so we don't have to convert all our resistances. So we can start generating our matrix, right? So we have one node here. Here. Can you send me to the picture on your video? Um, maybe. Okay. So, which of these node voltages do we want to analyze? The N3, right? Because that's the one that's on the node A and B. So, that's going to give us basically our E7N. So, Starting off with our matrices, what is going to be going into node one? Six, yep. Okay, what's in common between one and two? What's in common between one, two and one and three? Yep, so you can just translate that. Now what's on two? Okay, and what's in common between two and three? Right, last one, best one. What's in three? Two. All right. So now that's going to be times our node voltages. All right. So now I'm just going to put this down here, the equal. What are our non dependent sources here? Is that going where? Is there anything else for our non dependent sources? Okay, next. What are we going to have going into V1? <laughs> and? Okay. And he's like, we're good at it, guys. <laughs> I know you're strong. <laughs> okay, what's going into VN2? Anything going into No3? 
I mean, yeah, but that's gonna be that's gonna we're gonna add it over here. But you guys are right, it's a J. But there's nothing here. So this is our non-dependent. This is our dependent. This is our like imaginary I created. All right. So those are our things. So before we move on, we gotta get those um, B5 and I4 into things we wanna find. What is V5 gonna be? Mm -hmm. Is it? That would be correct. Yeah. So I4, what's that gonna be? VN2 times what? Right. Right. And we know why we multiply here and not divide, like typical own. Exactly. All right. So let's shake these down here. Um. Yeah. So since we only want to find the voltage. We don't want to care about the current. We'll just put it in terms of node voltages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have this. Let's rewrite it. So we have. So our JG1 was 8 amps, right? So you just plug that in. Plus 0, 0, J0, J0. So now let's simplify this out and put it in terms of our node voltages. So what is going to be our first one? Right? So what is going to be on V1 spot here? What's the regular GM? Oh. Two and two. Okay. Okay. So we're here now. Bless you. So it's going to be in our v VN1 position. Yep. Okay, VN2. So that's going to be exactly what's in VN3. Exactly. All right. Now, next look, next row. What's next? Four point two zero. And what about the last row? Exactly. Okay. So now, how we got there? All makes sense. So now we can move it over. So, what's the answer? Good okay. job, guys. <laughs> I'm very proud. Yeah, just put it in your calculator, honestly. I've done that. <laughs> Great, next. Because he didn't put all the work? Yeah. Because we're so used to be like 
plugging into Inspire, and then you get all these like you simplify. We just put that in. I, I, I did that. So we want to find the feminine, right? What is that going to get us? Which node vulture do we want? Yeah. Three. So now we can just plug that into the calculator and we say that J0 is what? Zero. Zero. So what is our VN1, VN2, VN3? I mean, you can't do this in your head, boys. <laughs> you cannot invert a matrix and multiply it by <laughs> cone vector. You got these guys. Yep. All right, so now we need to find the resistance. So we need to find R7 in. And for this, we set J zero equal to what? And what do we do with other sources? Exactly. Okay, so now what is going to be our? Oh, the same matrix as the other part? Yeah. <laughs> um, What's the answer? Zero. Zero. Right? So now we can draw our final thing. And then here you can call E7 you know whatever you want, right? So even if you flip it and you were to have a negative in one of these, you can call these so if this was negative enough and you wanted it to be positive, you just let it be negative one, you know? Yeah. You, you control whatever yeah. value you want here. You don't want it to be. You always want it to be one because technically what you're doing is you're going to find Vn and then basically R7 n is going to be found by doing Vn minus your E, right? Mm -hmm. So you always want that to be positive. So you'll just get a same value here. So are there any questions with this problem? <laughs> That's what I wrote. I and I did a big like, subtract with an arrow, and I took it up to him, and I was like, "What other words should I show?" And he was like, <laughs> and "Then you wrote subtract. So that was good. Great. So subtract. Yeah, I just tried. I don't know how to create it. All right, you guys ready for last? Yeah, so, so actually, I'm going to let you guys work this out. Uh, this was a quiz question for us back when uh, circuits one had a laugh section. Um, so he gave us like 15 minutes to answer these. So I'm going to give you 15 minutes 
to answer this and whoever gives me the right answer is gonna get some. That one, everybody knows the main rule. I will give you a very big hint. How do we add capacitors that are in parallel? Right, so, so if they look like these, this is just C plus C, right? And if they look like these, Oh, show your work, Grace. If you don't bring me all your work, you don't get the speaker. <laughs> you better not say, I put it in my Inspire with, um, <laughs> same here, same here. Don't get me wrong, I also did it like that. No. If you find the answer, just can show me your paper without telling your be your bodies, okay? Wait, bring it over. All right, yeah, that looks good. Give me the final answer. All right, you got it. We got a winner, guys. The real gift will come later, but you can have it. Yeah. Yeah, well, you're a little off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. What speaker you want? You rock?
feel like that's not right. Mm -hmm. Um, I, th I think it was like, uh, the answer should be nano, in nano ferrets too. I mean, that will answer that he gave me was a nano ferret. It was just off by some numbers, right? It was like 13.8 nano ferrets or something that you got. Yeah. Right, my right value. but you're almost there, right? Because that's not the, what you found is a combination of that. It makes sense. I think you're almost there, but what you guys are not doing is flipping, flipping at the end. Okay, okay. Okay, does any is everybody getting a value that is a one point three seven eight and then you don't know what to do from there? Yeah. Okay, all right. So so that value you guys are getting from here to here. I hope most of you kind of ended up with something like this, right? Where this guy is like 3C over 5, this guy is C, and then this guy is um, 5C over 3. Right? And then you add this in parallel, which gives you 15C over 49. Right? So you want this to equal 4.5 nanofarads, right? So if we solve for C, right? Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, so you're not looking, you have the value for C, like for CAV. But what what um what value of C will give you that, right? Exactly. You want all of that to equal that.
right? We're good. We know how to ask capacitor. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and work it out with you, just in case. Uh, in case you don't have an inspire and um, you're doing this by hand. So the first section. Everybody knows the product over the sum, right? For parallel. That could have helped in this problem if you don't have an inspire where you can just put the variables and call it a day. So if you have to do it by hand or if you need to show more work on the test, just remember product over the sum and then kind of simplify as much as you can. So this is just for branch, for the branch in red. Um, and now, I'm going to go ahead and do, oh. I don't know if this will help at all, but I'm going to go ahead and do Kramer's rule in case he didn't like the fact that you said, oh, I put it in my inspire and I got this answer. So, or in case you don't have an inspire and you don't know how to get, uh, for example, if you have name and you're trying to find these. Well, I'm going to show you how you actually do Kramer's rule to find, uh, for example, oh, but before we do that. Okay, so this is your original matrix for a name, right? Uh, before you do the to the negative one times the known. So this is what is unknown, right? This vector. So I'm right now I'm only gonna do B1, uh, and then I'll leave it for you as an exercise. If you don't have an inspire and you need to solve your uh, via Kramer's rule, or if you just want to show more work on the test and not get 15 points off, then this is what you could do. <laughs> So if we're trying to solve for B1, then what we need to do is, since B1 is the first row, first column of this vector, we need to take all the combinations of these, of the first column and take like all the determinants 
So the equation for B for B1 will look something like this. Delta 1, 1 over delta times, um, in our case, these are, um, I guess, I1 total, I2, I3. Uh, so here we will have I1 and then minus, and I hope you just remember this minus comes from like uh, matrices. You know how it's plus, minus, plus, minus, minus, plus, all that stuff. You should have learned in differential equations or linear algebra. Um, and then this is I2 plus delta 3, 1 over delta uh, I3. Okay, so this is kind of gross. So what you could do on your inspire is find the determinant of the matrix because it's a three by three, I'm not doing it by hand. But if you do determinant parentheses that, and you don't need an inspire to find the determinant of the matrix without, um, without variables. So the determinant of that guy is just, um, I think zero point, let me see, I found this. Zero point zero six six repeating, and then um, so your delta one one, you're gonna take column one row one, and you're gonna kind of block it, and then you take the determinant of this part, which is pretty easy. And then all of these times your I1, which is negative 1.4. And that's your first, this term here is this, right? So then, and then I just, I factor out the determinant. Um, so then the next term is negative. And then, so if we wanna do, um, it's second row, second, first column, second row, right? So now we're gonna block these and these and find the determinant of that, which is just a two by two matrix. So you just do negative 0.2 times um, 0.625. The other, the rest of it is zero because of this zero here. So we don't care about the other part. And then we multiply that by 2.9. And then the last term, which is delta 3, 1, now you block the first row and the third column. And again, you'll see you just have negative 0.2 times negative 0.5. And that guy is a positive, so that is negative 0.2 times negative 0.5 times I3, which is negative 1.5. And if you plug all of these in your calculator, you get V1. So you can see how this is a lot more work than just putting in your inspired that to the negative one times your other vector and calling it a day. So um, this could help you too once you have, if you don't have an inspire and once you have um, either dependent, active or passive or like imaginary, then you have to do Kramer's rule. Um, Yes, if, but he doesn't let you use calculator on the test, right? Really? Oh, wow. That's pretty nice. Open, I, open laptop. Wow, that's it's not. Nice. You can turn on That's cool. That's pretty nice. Perfect. Um, anyway, so if you do that, you get the same answer that we did with our... And then you will have to obviously do the same for B2 and B3. But for B2 and B3, you obviously have, um, I'm just gonna put the formula and you'll get the idea, it's not. I think uh, Russell should have a Kramer rules document somewhere. Yeah, but Kramer's rule is not fun. Hopefully he will let you just put it, say you should ask me for the test like hey is this step 
acceptable, like putting, you know, the matrix in your calculator and getting your matrix vector? Just if you. It's not him creating the test. Yeah, it's not him that doing this in TA. You well, but he can tell the TA to tell them, tell them it's okay. Wait a minute. Even in class, he tells us that's easy. You just plug into your calculator and get the answer from there. Yeah, well, anyways, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to email us. For those of you who want to rework this problem with a negative and see if it changes, let us know. We'll be, we'd like to know too.